Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss distribution from a partnership. The first thing we need to understand that not all payments made from the partnership to a partner are treated as distribution. Because money between the partnership and various partners could take place in different forms, such as interest payments. The partners, sometimes what they do, they lend money to the partnership. As a result, the partnership might pay them interest in return of their lending. Well, that's, that's an exchange, that's a distribution, but it takes the form of an interest. Another, another form could be the partners, they have their own property, plant and building in a separate C corporation or, a, or an S corporation or a sole proprietorship, and they might rent that property to the business and the partnership, the business will pay rent to the partners. Also, we talked about guaranteed payments and we specifically stated that guaranteed payment are not distribution. And we had one whole session about guaranteed payment and there could be exchanges, buying and selling between the partners and the partner, the partners and the partnership. And sometimes it could amount to related party transaction. Never the fa never, nevertheless, it is a form of distribution or exchange between the two parties. So first we need to know that distribution is different than, that, than any of those. So let's go ahead and talk specifically about the various types of distribution that we could have. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. There are two types of distribution that we need to be aware of when it comes to partnership. We have a liquidating distribution and non-liquidating or called current distribution. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, in both situation, you can distribute cash, you can distribute property. So distribution basically, when the, when the partnership distribute cash or property to the partner, and it could, be a, it could be a liquidating distribution or a non-liquidating. What is liquidating distribution? Well, liquidating distribution is simply put when the partnership liquidates and distribute all the properties to the partners. Simply put, we're going out of business. We are closing. This is what a liquidating distribution means. Basically, you know, closing the business. This is one form of liquidating distribution. Another form of liquidating distribution is when a partner redeem their interests, such as in a case of retirement. That's also called a liquidating distribution. Basically, you are ceasing to be a partner. This is basically what a liquidating or the business ceases to exist as a partnership. Now we have a non-liquidating distribution. Well, simply put, well, it's not a liquidating distribution. It's called also current. We are still in business. We are open. And as a partner, we are still a partner. This usually occur when the partner remains a partner in the partnership after the distribution. And this is the common one. You, you get a distribution from the partnership, you stay as a partner, the partnership continue as a, as, as a viable business, life goes on. So in this session, and generally speaking, in a CP, on a CPA exam or in your accounting course, we usually cover current distribution or non-liquidating distribution. Also within distribution, we have to differentiate between a proportionate and disproportionate distribution. So we need to know what is proportionate and what is disproportionate. Just as, they, as, they, as the term suggests, proportionate, it means you receive your share of that distribution. Okay, proportionate distribution occurs when a partner receives their share, whatever their share is of certain ordinary income producing asset. So if you own 30%, you're going to get 30% of that distribution. It means you're getting whatever you proportion proportionally sharing okay under those circumstances not under those circumstances under this type of distribution under proportionate distribution which we're going to be discussing more proportionate so it's going to be current and proportionate distribution that we're going to be working with generally speaking there's 
neither the partner nor the partnership recognizes gain or loss, generally speaking, on a proportionate current distribution. Typically speaking, generally speaking, no gain, no loss. You know, when I say generally and typically, it means there's always an exception, right? But generally, there's no gain and no loss. Usually, the partner takes the carry over basis and the asset distributed. So the basis from the partnership is basically transferred to the partner. The partner basis and the partnership interest is reduced. So once you have a distribution, remember, distribution reduces your basis, it reduces your basis. So if they gave you a property with a basis of a $10,000, then whatever your basis is, if your basis are 100,000, now you reduce your basis by 10,000 down to 90. So distribution reduces your basis, but it cannot reduce your basis below zero. What happened if you receive more than your basis? We'll talk about this, okay? So you would reduce your basis. This proportionate distribution, which is which is not proportionate, happens when a partner's share of a certain ordinary income producing asset either increases or decreases their asset. It means you're getting more or less than what you are worth in terms of equity. So what does that mean specifically? It's mean when you distribute of asset or income that's not proportional to the partner's original equity stake to their equity stake, and when would that happen? Well, under unique circumstances, I mean, I'm gonna say, for example, you wanna get rid of a partner, you just give them, you know, say, you know what, you, you own 30%, we're gonna give you 35% share, but we want you to get a leave, basically something like this, <laughs> something like this, or a special arrangement, special arrangement, special arrangement. But again, we don't worry about disproportionate distribution, we're gonna be working with, with current distribution that is proportionate. Now, what can we distribute? Well, we can distribute cash or sometime we could have a debt relief. Basically, the debt relief is the same thing as if you're giving someone cash. If we have a cash distribution, a partner might have to recognize a gain if the cash distribution is greater, surpasses the partner's adjusted outside basis in the partnership. So if your outside basis is 10000 and we gave you $12,000 in cash, we gave you 2000 more than what your basis are, your outside basis. Well, guess what? You have $10,000 basis. We gave you more. We returned all your money. In addition to that, we gave you an additional $2,000. Where that $2,000, guess what? That's a gain. Remember, basis is return of capital. Return of capital is not taxable. It's not taxable, the 10,000. Basically, we're giving you back what you gave us, the basis. You built those spaces over the years, but we're giving you way more than what your basis, therefore, that addition is what? Is taxable. Also, the, direction, the, de the reduction, the decrease and the partner's shares of the partnership debt is treated as cash distribution. So every time the debt goes down to the part from the partnership, your share of that debt goes down, it's as they gave you cash. Loss is recognized, no loss is recognized by a partner in a current distribution. There's no such thing as loss. You don't recognize loss. Now, how does, how does this all impact the basis? Well, just to review, this type of distribution first lower the basis of the partners in the partnership. As I told you, if you receive cash, you lower your basis. If an act, it's an access. If the reduction exceeds the partner's basis, it results in a taxable gain. Basically, this is a summary of what we just said. We could also, in addition to cash, we can distribute property. Again, typically, no gain is recognized on the property. However, if the inside basis of the distributed property is greater than the partner's outside basis and the partnership interest, then the distributed asset assumes a substitute basis. What does that all mean? We're going to see in a moment in an example. But simply put, if your basis, if you're giving something worth 50,000 and the outside basis of the partner is 40, you're giving them more than their basis, then we're going to use the, the, the partner will assume a substitute basis. Don't worry, we'll see what that in a moment in an example. What happened if we distributed multiple assets? We could distribute cash, inventory, a property, plant and equipment, various property. Here's what happened. There's an order that we have to follow when that happens. Assets are considered distributed and basis is assigned in the following order. First, we say it's the cash amount. Then if we gave receivable and inventory, we reduce the basis by the receivable and inventory, which is those are called hot asset. Then all other assets comes third. Okay. And the basis is allocated to asset within within 
a category based on their adjusted basis of the partnership. Don't worry, we'll work an example illustrating all these concepts. Let's look at an example that illustrate every concept that we just talked about. So we're going to have six different scenarios. So focus with me on each scenario separately, starting with A. I'll start with a simple example, then we, we add to it. In scenario A, we have an asset distributed as cash. So we're distributing only cash. That's all we're distributing to a partner with a basis of three hundred thousand dollar. What's going to happen? Well, the basis is three hundred thousand. The cash distributed it's going to reduce the basis by one fifty. We did not relieve any debt. Basis after cash and debt relief is one fifty. There's no gain recognized. Uh, we did not give them any account receivable. So basis after account receivable is 150. We did not give them any land. The basis of their land is 150. Therefore, basis after all distribution in the partnership is 150. Now, if this partner sells their interest in this partnership for 170, they have a gain of 20,000 on their partnership interest if they sold their interest. But simply put, all what we did here is we distributed cash and we saw the results, what happened to the basis. Let's look at example B. In example B, we distributed cash of 150. We distributed a piece of land for with a, with a basis of 60, fair market value of 100,000. Okay, so we gave them cash and land. Well, the basis, the basis in the partnership is 300,000. What do we do first? In the order, we first we look at the hot asset cash, 150, 300,000 minus 150. Basis after cash is 150. Well, we don't have any account receivable. Basis after account receivable, which is the hot asset, still 150. Now we have land. We have fair market value and basis. We just ignore the fair market value. 150 minus the basis of the land distributed. Your basis after all distribution in the partnership is 90,000. 90,000. And your basis is in the land 60,000. And your basis in the land is 60,000. Let's look at scenario C. In scenario C, we distributed cash and we could we distributed an account receivable with a basis of zero and fair market value of 160. The partner has interest of 300,000. Again, 300,000 minus the cash will give us a basis of 250 after the cash distributed. Then we have the basis of the basis of the receivable and fair market value, we ignore the fair market value. The basis is zero. Two, the basis is zero. 250 minus zero equal to 250 minus the zero land equal to 250. Therefore, the basis now is 250. Now, once you collect the, the account receivable, it's considered income to you. But again, because the basis of the account receivable is zero. Let's look at scenario D. Scenario D. We gave a cash of 400,000. The basis in the partnership is 300,000. What is unusual about scenario D is we gave them more than the basis. So the cash received is an excess. So the cash that we gave them is greater than the outside basis. So 300,000 minus 400,000 will give us a basis in quote a negative basis of 100,000. There's no such thing as negative basis of 100,000. What's going to happen is we're going to take this 100,000 and recognize it as a gain. Recognize it as a gain. We're going to recognize 100,000 as a gain. Simply put, even if we had negative, once we recognize the gain, negative 100,000, once since we paid the taxes on the gain of 100,000, that 100,000 bring our basis up to zero. But simply put, we recognize it as a gain because we cannot have negative basis. Well, if that's the case, we don't have account receivable, we don't have land, so your basis is zero. So this is where we have the cash is in excess, the cash is in excess of the basis. Let's look at scenario E. Scenario E, we did not give cash, which is basically relief of liabilities of 400,000. What did I say about relief of liability? It's as if they gave you cash. If someone tell you you're not responsible for $400,000, well, thank you very much. You just gave me $400,000 because I was supposed to pay this debt and you took it over as if you went to the bank, paid the bank on my behalf, or as if you gave me the money, I went to the bank and I paid it. You gave me $400,000. Thank you very much. I will take it. Same thing as cash. Same concept. The basis is 300000 
The partner has a cap, uh, debt relief of 400,000, therefore the basis is negative 100,000, end quote. We cannot have a negative basis. What are we gonna do? We're gonna recognize a gain of 100,000 and the basis will, will be back to zero and that's the end of the story. Let's look at scenario F. We gave cash of 200,000, we gave land adjusted basis of 300, fair market value of a half a million, I could take out the fair market value. The basis in the partnership is 300,000. First, we're gonna take the cash, reduce the basis, and the basis after the cash is 100,000. Okay, that's fine. Do we have any gain? We don't have any gain yet because you know we did not receive cash in excess. But what we uh, what we are giving is a land with a basis of 300,000. If we deduct 300,000 out of 200,000, we're gonna be a negative 200,000. Well, we cannot be negative basis of 200,000. So what's gonna happen is, we're gonna say of that 300,000, of that 300,000, we're gonna use 100,000 as the adjusted basis to bring our basis down to zero. And we're gonna take this, this land and our adjusted basis in the land is our substitute basis. Up, what's left in our basis, 100,000. Therefore, the land will have a substitute basis. The land will have a substitute basis of 100,000. So what did we technically do when we substitute the land? So the land has a basis of 300,000. So if somebody gave you land, they say, okay, I'm gonna give you two options. Do you want the land basis to be 300,000 or do you want the land basis to be 100,000? And your choice should be, Basis doesn't matter, it's not gonna give me more or less money, but you say, I want my basis to be 300,000. Why? Because if you sold this land for 400,000 in the future, you would say, I sold, the proceeds are 400, the basis is 300, in the future, you will pay, let's choose something other than 400, let's assume you sold it for 450, you have a gain of 150,000. Now what's gonna happen is, if you sold it for 450, and you have an adjusted basis of 100,000, which is your substitute basis, your gain, if my math is right, is 350. And you don't want 350, you want the gain of 150. But you can do that because you are taking the adjusted basis. All what you did is you deferred that gain for later until you sell that land. This is what, that was, what technically happened. And your basis in the partnership is zero. So every time, if you wanna sell your interest, even if you sell it for a dollar, that dollar will be a gain. The, the basis and the partnership. So what I did, I showed you a few examples, various examples that illustrate the various concepts when we have what type of a distribution? Current distribution, current distribution. And what type of distribution? Current and proportionate distribution. So just keep in mind, this is what we are working with. It's very important to understand how distribution is treated for a partnership. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional lectures, multiple choice, true, false, resources, notes. That's gonna help you do what? Understand this concept better, whether you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student. Invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.